so the surprise team of the year for me was the Hornets and it's incredible what New Orleans has done and um, they definitely deserve most improved team because I mean last year they were 39 and 43 I believe yeah 39 and 43 last year and this year you know they end up second in the West which is just incredible <laughs> So this year's disappointing team for me was the Chicago Bulls. There's a couple other teams out there that were very disappointing that you thought might be a little bit better this year. Um, I can think of the Bucks, who have some very, very good players who should be a better team this year. Um, but the Bulls last year were 49 and 33, and this year are 33 and 49, so they have the exact opposite record as of last year. Um, because of that, I think, I mean, it's pretty sad actually I kind of blame personally both the management and the players um, the management um, you know sparking all those trade rumors and things like that with Kobe Bryant trying to get him traded and, um, and the players were I guess really upset about it and maybe they underperformed because of it. they were favored in the East and um, in the preseason and they ended up 11th in the East and the East is pretty weak so that's pretty sad All right, so Coach of the Year is probably one of the toughest ones this year. Doc Rivers with Boston, you got Nate McMillan in Portland. Um, I think Doc Rivers is a pretty good candidate. I personally didn't pick him because um, even though he was able to keep the big three together and was able to have them all work together as a unit, I think that they did a lot of that themselves, more than I think people give them credit for. I mean, they're all a bunch of veterans. They're all probably going to be retiring pretty soon, you know, in the next five years. and they know that their time is coming up and they need to win a championship and they're also thirsty for that championship they were willing to maybe put aside their egos a little bit and be able to work together to uh, win a championship so I think Doc Rivers is a great coach he's done a great job but maybe getting a little more credit than he deserves and I'm gonna have to go with Byron Scott I mean he's pulled this team from non from a you know ninth tenth place seed last year to uh, second in the West this year and it's incredible what he's done he's gotten them all to work very well together um, Chris Paul has improved his game. Pretty much every player on that team has improved their game incredibly, and it's been an amazing season, really, for New Orleans. All right, so sixth man of the year. Um, this was the easiest decision, hands down. Um, Manu Ginobili. I'm just going to come right out and say it. Um, Leandro Barbosa doesn't even come close this year, unfortunately. Manu has um, carried the in my opinion, carried the Spurs through a lot of their tough times this season with injuries of, you know, Tony Parker getting injured, Tim Duncan getting injured for a few games. I mean, Ginobili has been there, and he has done an incredible job this season. I mean, he's had some injuries as of late, but he's having his best statistical season of his career so far. So um, he's the reason that they are the third seed in the West, in my opinion. Tim Duncan obviously is a great player, obviously the best player on their team, but Ginobili has done an incredible job and off the bench so he started 23 games this season um, but so what he's still the sixth man easily all right so rookie of the year um, I think it's a little bit easier than a lot of people think um, up until a couple weeks ago I was actually thinking Al Thornton a little bit I mean, he's almost averaging a double-double, which is incredible for a rookie. Almost averaging 10 rebounds a game alone is incredible for a rookie. I mean, he's, you know, underdeveloped compared to a lot of the older guys on the court, so the fact that he's able to get in there and get those boards is pretty phenomenal. But Kevin Durant, you know, I mean, he's had an amazing season, averaging 20 points a game, shooting 43% from the field, which isn't great, but not terrible. I think people have been really hard on him this year because he's had a really up-and-down season, but... He's done some incredible things, and just imagine how bad, how bad, just imagine how bad Seattle would be without him. Uh, it's actually very hard to imagine. Um, it's, he's had an incredible season. Um, I think people need to, you know, give him a break a little bit. Um, Seattle was terrible as a team this year. He is the main man on that team, as opposed to Al Thornton, who isn't even close to the main man on his team. Um, so, yeah, uh, Kevin Durant, Rookie of the Year. Comes down to the MVP, 
and this is one of the closest MVP races I think in a very long time. It's it's been an incredible season, really. I mean, there's been a lot of arguments. I was for Chris Paul, I was for Kobe, I was for LeBron for a while, um, not anymore. Um, I was even for Kevin Garnett earlier in the season, but um, it's it, um, obviously in the last two or three weeks, it's been between really just Chris Paul and Kobe. Chris Paul averaging 20 points, 11 or 21 points, 11 assists per game is phenomenal. I mean, he's the reason. Hornets are where they are, but on the other hand, Kobe is phenomenal as always. Hands down the best player in the league, has been for the last three years, and this year the Lakers are on top as opposed to the last three years. They're first in the West this year, best record, and for that he gets the MVP in my opinion. Um, that game between the Hornets and the Lakers pretty much decided it for me, and it was completely solidified when the Lakers sealed the first seed in the West. Um, I don't think anyone can really argue again well they can but it's it's difficult to argue against Kobe now because the Lakers have the first seed and the best record in the West so um, Kobe MVP come on Sha -na 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 -na.